From the Ear to There Travel Studio, this is the Ear to There Disney Podcast. The Ear to There Podcast, it's time to start the show. Be sure to hold on tight, here we go. Exploring all the different Disney destinations. Ear to There, it's time to start the fun. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ear to There Disney Podcast. I am your host, Phil Gramlich. I am also the owner and the founder of Ear to There Travel, which is, of course, a Disney-specialized travel agency. It is my job to take away all of that stress, all of that anxiety, and all that time that it takes to book and plan a Disney trip so you can focus on the really fun things like having a great time with your family and friends and enjoying the magic. And let me tell you, that sounded funny. Who am I, Hulk Hogan? Let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> all right, I'm making myself laugh. So I take away all that stress, all that anxiety, and all that time at absolutely no extra cost to you. That's the thing. Planning a Disney trip takes a ton of time. It takes a lot of research, a lot of getting up early, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, sitting in front of your computer or your app on your phone, banging out reservations or fast passes. Don't do any of that. Let me take care of all of that for you. Let me be your guide. Let me be the pacha to your Cusco. I watched Emperor's New Groove with my kids last night, and I have it on my mind. But let me take care of everything for you. Let me get you to your kingdom, meaning the Magic Kingdom. And I won't even have to threaten to evict you from your home. And you won't even have to turn into a llama or a whale or anything else. Have you seen that? It's such a great underrated movie. I love when Yzma's guard is turned into a cow. And he goes, uh, excuse me, I've just been turned into a cow. Can I go home? (laughs) And Yzma's like, you are excused. That's not how Yzma talks. Anyway, (laughs) the long long and short of it here is let me be your guide and I will handle everything for you totally free of charge. And you can find this podcast, my blog, or request a free, yes, another free thing, free, no obligation quote over at eartotheirtravel.com. Oh, and I want to hear from you about what you think about this episode or what you think about all the episodes, any episode, whatever. (laughs) <laughs> so go over to eartotheirtravel.com slash message and send me a message and let me know what you think about the show. For every person that sends me a message in the month of July, you will be entered into a contest to win a free candle from the Magic Candle Company. Again, that's eartotheirtravel.com slash message. Okay, this is episode number 132 for the week of July 23rd. 2018. So grab a drink, grab a snack, and as a famous mouse once said, on with the show. And this week's episode is going to start off with the What About Bob segment of the show. That's where Disney legend and former Imagineer Bob Gurr comes on each and every week to answer your questions and mine. Now, if you don't know who Bob is, Bob created things like the Matterhorn, the monorails on both coasts, the Omnimover system, including the ride vehicles for the Haunted Mansion, the Main Street vehicles, the Autopia vehicles, the Indy Speedway, or whatever it's called now. The list goes on and on and on. If you'd like to have Bob answer your question here on the show, please call the voice line. That phone number is 267-551-1971. Or you could always email it to me at phil at eartotheirtravel.com. Oh, and I almost forgot. The What About Bob segment of the show is brought to you by the Waltland Bus Tour. Each and every month, Bob takes a bunch of lucky guests around Southern California with stops in Burbank in Los Angeles and in Glendale. And you make these stops to explore the history of the Disney company, but more importantly, the life of Walt Disney. To get tickets for the tour, head over to www.waltland.com. Now, without further ado, here's the guy, the only guy that I know 
who has a piece of Peter Pan's flights track in his living room. The one, the only, the legend, Bob Gurr. It's what about Bob? Bob Gurr, the legend, creator of the Matterhorn, the monorails in the haunted mansion. What about Bob, the Disney legend? Do, did you ever or do you ride roller coasters? Uh, not, not much anymore, but I, uh, the, uh, I, I really hate roller coasters. I just, I just don't like riding, but I would, I would, every time I went to a park, I would go ride them because I wanted to keep track of, uh, you know, which ones are good. What is it that makes some of them good? Uh, you know, the Alpen guys down there in Virginia, that was one of the nicest ones to ever ride, you know, cause it was in a nice setting and it was, um, uh, a very smooth track done very nice. It's the kind where you dangle, you know, your feet are dangling. And, uh, and, and but anyway, it was a pleasant one to ride. Out here in uh, Magic Mountain, I've uh, ridden all, all but the Riddler. I won't ride the Riddler. That one, that one will tear you to pieces. Uh, the, uh, but the, the one that did the revolution out there, which was the first one, that's a very smooth one. The one I like best is Goliath. Goliath is one of these great big sweepers way up in the sky. Um, I don't like the, uh, the the short, rough ones. I like the big, fast, graceful ones. The uh, the Hulk, I went to Universal Islands of Adventure, and I, I was really impressed with the Hulk years ago. Yeah, that's a that's one that my, my kids have been asking me to, to take them on, and we haven't done that one yet. We, uh, yeah, they're, they're seven and five, yeah. so I think this summer yeah, we just, might go down and do it. Yeah, they just did some redesign of it, but it, it, it was a, a magnetic launcher type of thing. You know, you got shot out of a cannon, and the minute you uh, got up to the full speed, the first thing it did, it made a, a snap roll to the left, and then you could see where you're going about that time. It didn't matter. You you were twisted. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a it's an intense it's an intense uh, start to that roller coaster for sure. Yeah, but it's a, but it's a real good one. Yeah, agreed. And thanks to Bob for once again answering yet another question on the show. Funny story about Bob. I tried to get him on a phone call this week and he called me back and said, sorry, I'm on an RV vacation. He owns an RV. So I'll call you when I get back for my, my trip. I hope that at 86, almost 87 years old, I'm still taking RV trips and cruises and riding a bike like Bob does every day. The guy never stops. It's insane. So thanks again to Bob. All right, here we go. Let's get on to episode number 132. And before I get really started on this episode, I want to tell you what my all-time favorite Walt Disney World sound is. So yeah, it's kind of cheating because I'm giving it my favorite first, but... You'll understand in a minute. This isn't a sound effect from an attraction or a noise that you'll hear while walking through the parks. Actually, instead, it's my favorite sound is the sound of a cast member saying, welcome home. Now, I don't know when this trend started, and honestly, I didn't do the research for it for this episode. I do know that for me and for countless and for my family as well and for countless other people, Walt Disney World truly, truly, truly is a home away from home. I've had so many just amazing, amazing memories there from meeting my wife while we were both cast members to getting engaged. Actually, I proposed. I didn't, well, they say getting engaged. Right? Yeah, I proposed to her. She said, yes. Okay. We honeymooned in Disneyland. I mean, my younger daughter even crawled for the first ever time on the floor in our room at the beach club. So yeah, tons and tons of my family's memories and my memories are tied to Walt Disney World and Disneyland. There's something magical and fantastic about Walt Disney World, sure. And I think that's obvious to almost everyone who has ever visited, except for those really grumpy people. And I don't mean the dwarf here. I mean the grumpy, grumpy people. I don't understand grumpy people in Walt Disney World. Do you? I know that not everyone loves the heat and loves waiting in lines and not everyone is cut out for the theme parks. I totally get that 100% completely. 
I just, what I just don't understand are the people or is the person who can walk around Walt Disney World with a frown or like a scowl on their face. I think even the grumpiest person can find something to smile about in Walt Disney World. Anyway, where was I? All right. So, right. There is something magical and wonderful about Walt Disney World, but there's also something that's comforting and relaxing for those of us who have, you know, been so many times. And for those of us who have so many memories there, that's why the two words welcome home means so much to me and to my family. And I really think they mean the same types, you know, the same kinds of things to so many Disney fans out there. It's why we go back year after year and trip after trip. It's why I do what I do for a career. And it's definitely why I do this podcast. And I really hope that with this show, I can bring just a little tiny bit of that Disney magic and wonder to you wherever you're listening right now. So I hope that this podcast brings you home even just a little bit. And that was it. Good night, everybody. That's my, <laughs> that's my list. No, but that was my big one. And that would have been a leadoff first pitch home run if this was baseball. That's Jimmy Rollins coming up to the plate and smashing that solo home run to set the tone for the game. (laughs) All right, now let's get to the rest of the list. And these are noises. These are sounds. These are things that you can only hear in Walt Disney World. Or I think a couple are going to be from the cruise line or from Disneyland as well. But these are these aren't the best, these aren't the greatest, but these are my favorite sounds in Disney and Disney World or Disneyland. And you don't have to agree because this is my favorite. This isn't a be all and end all kind of list. But I hope you enjoy it and I hope this is fun. And okay, so let's get started. The next one I wanted to bring up is from Magic Kingdom or from Disneyland, but for kind of argument's sake, we're gonna say this is Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World. And it's in Liberty Square. And you sometimes, actually, you can hear this from outside the park, which is a really rare and kind of cool thing. But from Liberty Square, when you're making your way through the land and you see you pass Hall of Presidents on your right, the Christmas shop on your left, you're coming up on Columbia Harbor House and you see the green, that familiar green awning. And you hear in the distance the howl of a dog or of a wolf. And your blood just ran cold. (laughs) Well, it's not scary. It's not a scary thing unless you're afraid of howling dogs or wolves. Which, by the way, I've never gotten someone to confirm that that was a wolf or a dog. But that howl is one of my favorite all-time sounds anywhere in Walt Disney World. Because no matter how far away you are, it's just, it sets the tone. And I know Haunted Mansion is, it's not a scary attraction, but it can be depending on who you're with and if you're with children, especially if you're with children. And I've said on the podcast before, there's that one moment that freaks me out to this day on Haunted Mansion. And it's when you're going backwards down the hallway and you're, Doom buggy is kind of shaking from side to side. And yes, I'm shaking. I'm kind of swiveling from side to side on my chair to kind of give myself the feeling. But you see the doorknobs spinning and cracking and the doors are trying to be opened by ghosts, I guess, while you're going down that hallway. And then you come upon the the coffin that's nailed shut. But there's a skeleton trying to push his way out of that coffin. And you hear that Get me out of here! By the way, that was recorded by Disney legend Existencio. That's pretty cool. He doesn't have a whole lot of voiceovers or sound in the park, but that's actually his voice. But yeah, that part always freaks me out. And to this day, when I'm with my kids, I'm like, I'm not scared, but (laughs) it scares me a little bit still. But it's not a scary attraction. It's a fun kind of attraction with some spooks and some kind of freaky things thrown in there. And it's all set off. It's all started, not by a mouse, but with that howl that you can hear from very far away. You didn't think I was going to do it twice, did you? There you go. (laughs) 
keeping you on your toes on this episode of the show. Okay, moving on to my next favorite sound. And this is another one. Let's go with another kind of a spooky one. And where's the other kind of creepy, spooky attraction located in Walt Disney World? Of course, it is over at Disney's Hollywood Studios at the end of Sunset Boulevard. And it is the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Now, there are, a lot, there are a lot, a lot of kind of famous sounds on this attraction. But the one I wanted to talk about isn't a singular sound. It's a group sound. And it's one that you can hear from right when you make that turn onto Sunset from Hollywood Boulevard. And the tower is in view in the distance. You start to hear the screams. <laughs> Those screams are pretty much unheard of anywhere else in Walt Disney World. But on Sunset Boulevard, you can hear them very, very clearly. And I love that. It makes me feel, I, I just get so excited for the attraction when I start hearing people screaming. Now, one thing I didn't know that I found out a couple of years ago is that not all of those screams are authentic. So Walt Disney World has been lying. <laughs> I guess that's a strong, that's too strong of a word. They have been tricking us a bit over the years, and some of those themes come from speakers that are placed in and around the attraction. Now, of course, there are tons of real screams that you're hearing as well. I mean, just ride on the Tower of Terror and you'll hear all the real screams. But if you rode by yourself with no one else around, you would also hear a bunch of those screams. Now, is that because? There are actual ghosts on the Tower of Terror, or is it the screams that they are pumping in? <laughs> I tend to think it's the screams they're pumping in, but whatever gets, you know, whatever floats your boat, whatever gets you to have a great time on that attraction works for me. All right, so another one that I love and that I was thinking of when I first, when I first sat down to think of what sounds do I love in Walt Disney World? That don't involve speaking. I didn't want to have parts where, you know, audio where there was a character or a narrator or a, a ride operator talking or speaking. I wanted pure sound. So this one, and I might cheat later on, <laughs> depending on how long the episode goes. But one sound that I've always loved hearing and, and love to listen to is the chime on Star Tours. Now, when it was when Star Tours was renovated and refurbished uh, a few years ago, that chime noise was updated and changed, but it's still pretty darn close to the original. So, if you don't know what chime I'm talking about, here it is. Now, that was changed a few years ago to this. <laughs> But really, either way, whatever way you slice it, I love, love that sound. It's not a sound that comes from the actual Star Wars universe, meaning, you know, Lucasfilm, or it's a purely Disney-created sound for this attraction. And to me, it's always sounded something like a real airline would have, like, at the beginning of a commercial or at the end of their commercial. Or, you know, when the flight attendant gets up to tell you the instructions for the flight, you would hear that doo -doo 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 -doo, before she started talking and after she started talking. So that's why I love it. It kind of puts you right in the middle of the Star Wars universe. It's a little kind of throwaway thing, but I'm sure it was debated by Imagineers like strongly trying to figure out what they wanted that sound to be. And it's just another example of how just 
in depth and deep these attractions really go. Because I'll bet when I said Star Tours chime, you were like, hmm, what's that? And as soon as you heard it, you were like, oh, yeah, I remember that. I love that. That's how it is for me. And I mentioned on this podcast before, and I'll mention it again. I also love the music at the exit, at the when you leave Star Tours when it's over and you hear all the seatbelts unbuckle at once, you're like, chuk, 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 you hear them all unsnap. The doors open with that whoo, sound. And that Star Wars music starts playing as you're walking out. All right, look, I said no music, but you have to, <laughs> when you start talking about Star Wars, you need, or Star Tours, you need that exit music in there. It gets me all psyched. Now I'm going to go watch like four of the movies. Okay, moving on. Let's go back to Magic Kingdom for my next favorite sound. And a lot of my favorite sounds come from Magic Kingdom because it's such a, just the experience and the music and the sounds of Magic Kingdom have become so iconic in my mind and so iconic. And just so many Disney fans' minds. But there's one that you hear, again, like the Haunted Mansion, how you hear this one as you're walking toward the park, or when you're right inside Town Square, when you enter the park, and that is this noise. Now, is there anything, anything more iconic in all of the Disney parks than the train whistle? You're racking your brain really hard right now to try to figure out if there is, and I sure as heck can't think of one if there is. Is there any noise that makes you feel like you're here, you're there, you're in Walt Disney World, you're at Magic Kingdom, you're at Disneyland, and all of your troubles, all of your worries just melt away? Is there anything that does that? like? The whistle, like the train whistle, maybe the conductor when he, when he, you hear him yell out, bored. I always thought it was all aboard. I don't know why they don't say it, but it's more bored in the, in the parks. Or when you hear that, bar, 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 bar. your attention, please. The passenger train, the EP Ripley now arriving at the station. <laughs> That's horrible, but <laughs> you know what I mean? The combination of the train whistle and the conductor and all that stuff, just again, it just makes all of that, all the stress that you have is gone. So I love that one. It's a, it's a, it's a simple one, but it's one again that you can hear from the transportation and ticket center or the ferry boats or the monorail. And I love it. All right, moving on to my next one. And I said a lot of them were going to be at Magic Kingdom and this one definitely is. And it's really close to the last one that I just talked about. It's another whistle, and it goes a little something like this. Of course, that one was the whistle from the Liberty Bell, which is the riverboat that goes around the rivers of America. It's actually been down for a while. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it return to Magic Kingdom. But when you're walking through Frontierland or even Adventureland or Liberty Square and you hear the whistle from the riverboat, doesn't it bring you back a little bit to Walt Disney and his love of all things Marceline, Missouri and Mark Twain and his love for things like Tom Sawyer Island, which, by the way, is the only I think I mentioned this before, the only attraction that was drawn up entirely by Walt Disney. And with the one in Disneyland being changed several years ago into the Pirate's Lair, the one in Magic Kingdom is the last one in the United States that is actually hand-drawn and designed by Walt himself. So the whistle from the Liberty Bell kind of, just, it just brings all of that into the forefront of my mind when I hear it, whether I'm in the park or right a minute ago when I played it for you, I, I was transported. For that one second, you, you hear that, and in your mind, you, you visualize the dock and waiting in line 
or riding on the the deck of the Liberty Bell and checking out all the sites like Big Thunder Mountain or Tom Sawyer Island or the Native Americans, all that cool stuff. So again, that's another one that instantly, when I hear it, it instantly brings me kind of to the park and all those memories come flooding back. And speaking of all those memories coming rushing and flooding back, here's one, another sound that I can never kind of get out of my head once I hear it. And that's it. The sound of the horse-drawn trolley walking down Main Street, USA has always been one of my favorites. And you don't even really have to be riding it. You just kind of have to be walking down the Main Street alongside of it. And the trolley has a ton of different sounds. It has the click clacking of the horse. It has the bell, as you can hear right now. And it has the Dapper Dance a lot, standing on the back of the trolley, singing their song. And again, I did say I wouldn't use music, but come on. What what is a horse-drawn trolley down Main Street, USA without the musical stylings of the Dapper Dance? You know, I didn't plan to put that whole clip in, but (laughs) 
as I was listening to it, I was like, this is really good. I'm going to leave this in. So I hope you enjoyed the simulated ride on the Main Street horse-drawn trolley down Main Street, USA. That is surely one of my favorites or a lot. There's a lot of my favorite sounds kind of combined into one there. Now, I know I said I wasn't going to do any music or anyone talking, but there's one that I really wanted to put on its list. So I hope you will forgive me if I break my own rule, or let's just say bend, if I bend my own rule for this one. And I've heard a lot of rumblings and rumors that this one's going to be rethemed or, or go away. And I really hope that because it's, for me, it's a classic. I know this one opened up in, I believe it was 98 or maybe 99. And it became an instant classic for me and for a lot of the people I was working with back at the time. And it's Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith. And it's just an iconic, when I say sound, it's one of my favorite sounds, but there's a whole, it's again, it's kind of like the, the trolley, the horse-drawn trolley scenario where it's a lot of sounds that kind of make up, in my mind, one sound that I love. So here you go. Have a listen. Uncle Joe Benson here, broadcasting live from the Aerosmith Country. Man, seemed like everybody in town headed down to this show. Traffic is really jammed out there. Don't worry. Just keep it right here. Don't let this get you down. Oh, wow. So I love that one. And right after that will be the screech of the tires through the launch. And it's one of my favorites. And again, I said I was cheating. I officially completely cheated on that one. But guess what? Like I said before on the podcast, it's mine. I do this show. So if you have a problem, you can write to Phil at ear to their travel.com. Tell me I broke the rules. I'll be nice about it. All right. While I'm breaking the rules <laughs> badly, let me give you another one that's going to be a rule breaker. And it's another one at Magic Kingdom, and it is in Frontierland. And I didn't want to include spiels or music, but I'm too much of a Disney nerd. And when I get into this mode of this reminds me of this and this, you know, sets, gets me, makes me feel like I'm home and I'm in Walt Disney World and I just can't help myself. So <laughs> this is still my favorite sounds of Walt Disney World. But now we should call it my favorite sound clips in Walt Disney World instead, because some of these are actual sound clips. So one of my favorite before you ride spiels in all of the park isn't delivered by a cast member. It's not delivered by a narrator or a tour guide or a character. It's delivered over the kind of the PA system at Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. And it's all about the wildest ride in the wilderness. Howdy, folks. Please keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the train and remain seated at all times. Now then, hang on to them hats and glasses, because this here's the wildest ride in the wilderness. It is the wildest ride in the wilderness. By the way, isn't Big Thunder Mountain Railroad so much better at night? I do love riding it during the day. It's a great attraction. But at night, it just kind of comes to life. I don't know why. Actually, maybe I do. It's the lighting. I think it's that like purplish lighting that it gets, that black light, that purplish lighting that it gets those effects, it really, really makes it a completely different experience at night. So make sure you ride at night. But when you're thinking about truly, crazily iconic sounds of Walt Disney World, you can't forget about that one. All right, so that's going to bring me to the last of my favorite sounds. And if you listen to this show, if you've been keeping score at home, <laughs> I always wanted to say that. Well, if you've been scoring at home, you know the score would be... Anyway, if you've been paying attention, you know that one of my favorite, and I see I use that word way too much. I do, and I know I do. I know that's a flaw that I have, but I love so many things in Walt Disney World so very much that I call a lot of them my favorites. And you also know if you're a regular listener that I have some things that I don't like that I won't mention on this episode because, hey, you got to go back and listen to the other shows. But yeah, I say everything is my favorite. I know that's probably a little over the top. I should start using things that I love. But one of my <laughs> things that I love, or I'm just going to say it, one of my favorite experiences in all of Walt Disney World or in Disneyland is the monorail. I've always loved it from the time I was a kid, 13 years old, got to Walt Disney World for the first time, saw the monorail overhead and was like, yeah, I got I to gotta ride that. 
I got to see what that's all about. I want to ride it. I wanted to ride it all day. As a matter of fact, my dad took me, my whole family was in Magic Kingdom, and my dad and I left the park on one of our last days just so we could take a couple kind of grand circle tours on the monorail so I could go through the contemporary again and go past the Magic Kingdom. And I just, I've always loved it. And it is, again, it's one of those iconic things. You think Walt Disney World, you think Magic Kingdom, you think monorail. And there are, of course, some very famous quotes and and spiels and lines from the monorail. And you can always hear when you're on the ground, you always hear the sound of the monorail coming. And you can hear that whoosh as it, you know, flies past you overhead while you're on the ground. But the sound that I'm talking about isn't a spiel, isn't that whooshing sound. Is not even please stand clear of the doors? It is the monorail chime, the ding dong that you hear while you are on board the Walt Disney World monorail. Take a listen. Yes, yeah, I love that noise. Again, that is another one I've used as a text alert on my phone. I, again, apologize to my wife and children. But when you hear that, you know, exa- as a Disney fan, not as, you know, a, a non crazy person that just lives in the world. <laughs> But as a Disney fan, when you hear that, you know exactly where it comes from, exactly what it is, and you can just imagine yourself on the monorail looking at Magic Kingdom or looking at Epcot, and it's just it's another one of those ones that just instantly brings you back to a place. And I love it, and you know, it's just, just like all the other ones on this list. It's again, <laughs> I'm going to say the word again, it's a favorite. And you know what? Before this this episode is over, I have to do it. I'm talking about the monorail, and I can't talk about the monorail without playing this sound clip. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. And what did you do right when you heard that? You heard the sound of the doors closing, <sighs> like that whoosh sound. I couldn't. I couldn't resist. I couldn't finish an episode of the show that talked about sounds without playing that sound. So those were some, not all, of my favorite Walt Disney World sounds. And I want to hear from you. What is your favorite Walt Disney World sound? Which one were you waiting for me to mention? I didn't mention it. And right now you're like, Phil, man, you forgot the greatest sounds. Shoot me a message. Let me know. Go to eartotheirtravel.com slash message and let me know which one I missed and let me know what you thought about this week's show. And that is going to do it for this week's episode of the Ear to There Disney Podcast. Thank you so much once again, as always, for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode, just like I hope you enjoy each and every show that I put out there. This was a fun one to do. When I mean, really, it can't not be fun. Is that right? Can't not be fun. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> when you talk about all of your favorite sounds of Walt Disney World. I mean, what a fun show to do. Thanks to Bob Gurr yet again for answering another question at the start of the show. And just remember, there will be a new episode of the Ear to There podcast on Monday, as well as a new episode of either It's a Food World or Word of the Week on Wednesday, maybe Thursday. (laughs) So until next time, thank you again so much for listening. From the bottom of my heart, you are awesome. Have an amazing week.